The Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, or GHS, is an internationally recognized standardization system for communicating the potential hazards for chemicals. The GHS was developed by the United Nations to provide a consistent approach to chemical hazard communication across countries and industries. Safety data sheets, or SDSs, are an essential component of the GHS. They provide users with important information about the hazards of a chemical. This information includes its physical, health, and environmental hazards, as well as how to handle and use the chemical safely. SDSs are used by workers, employers, and regulators to promote safety and prevent accidents in workplaces that use hazardous chemicals. In this training, we'll provide a general overview of the 16 sections of an SDS and their requirements. We'll walk you through how to read an SDS, and we'll discuss an employer's responsibilities regarding SDS provision and access. By the end of this training, you should have a better understanding of the importance of SDSs, as well as how to use them to keep you and others safe in the workplace. As mentioned previously, an SDS is comprised of 16 different sections covering everything from the chemical makeup of a substance and its potential hazards to proper transport, handling, and disposal. Let's take a look at each section and its contents. Section one of the SDS is called identification. This section covers basic information such as the product's common name and any synonyms, its identification number, and what the product actually does, including its recommended uses and any restrictions on use. This section also includes emergency contact information for the manufacturer, importer, or other responsible parties. Section two of the SDS is called hazard identification. It's one of the most important sections because it helps you understand the potential hazards associated with the chemical and how to handle it safely. This section includes any hazard classifications, which tell you if the product is flammable, toxic, corrosive, or otherwise. Hazard severity is ranked by category, from category one, most severe, to category five, least severe. You'll also find the signal word, which tells you the level of risk associated with the chemical. There are two signal words used on SDSs, danger for more severe hazards and warning for less severe hazards. Hazard statements then describe in plain language the risk of exposure to the chemical. In addition, you'll find pictograms that provide a quick visual reference to the hazards. The nine pictograms used on SDSs are based on the hazard classification system and have the following meanings. The flame pictogram indicates a flammable hazard. It's used for chemicals that can catch fire easily and can cause fires or explosions if not handled properly. The health hazard pictogram indicates hazards such as acute toxicity, skin sensitization, carcinogenicity, or reproductive toxicity. It's used for chemicals that can cause serious health effects if they come into contact with the body. The exclamation mark pictogram indicates a less severe health hazard such as skin irritation, eye irritation, or respiratory irritation. It's used for chemicals that can cause mild to moderate health effects if they come in contact with the body. The gas cylinder pictogram indicates a compressed gas hazard. It's used for chemicals that are stored under pressure and can explode or cause damage if mishandled. The corrosion pictogram indicates a corrosive hazard. It's used for chemicals that can cause severe damage to the skin, eyes, or metal surfaces. The exploding bomb pictogram indicates an explosive hazard. It's used for chemicals that can explode or cause serious damage if mishandled. The flame over circle pictogram indicates an oxidizing hazard. It is used for chemicals that can cause a fire or explosion if they come into contact with other chemicals, such as flammable or combustible materials. This environmental hazard pictogram indicates hazards such as aquatic toxicity or ozone depletion. It's used for chemicals that can cause damage to the environment if not handled properly. The skull and crossbones pictogram indicates a toxic hazard, specifically for chemicals that can cause death or serious injury if ingested, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. It's used for highly toxic chemicals such as certain pesticides, heavy metals, or poisons. 
Lastly, the hazards identification section may include precautionary statements on hazard prevention, response, storage, disposal, and any other hazards the chemical may pose, like dangerous interactions with other chemicals. Section three of the SCS provides detailed information on the chemical composition of the product. It lists all the ingredients in the product and their concentration as a percentage of the composition. Note that some specific concentrations may be legally withheld as a trade secret. Section four of the SDS provides quick information on the appropriate first aid measures to take in cases of exposure through eye contact, skin contact, inhalation, and ingestion. It describes key symptoms to look out for in the event of hazardous exposure and may also provide useful information for first responders and medical professionals. This section covers information for fighting a fire caused by the chemical. This includes recommendations on both suitable and unsuitable fire extinguishing equipment, advice on specific hazards that may develop during the fire, and explosion risks. This section also includes recommendations on special protective equipment or precautions for firefighters. Section six of the SDS provides recommendations on what to do in case the chemical is accidentally spilled, leaked, or released. This includes personal precautions like appropriate protective equipment, environmental precautions, such as how to dispose of the chemical and who to contact in case of environmental contamination, and appropriate methods and materials for containment and cleanup. Section seven of the SDS provides information on how to handle and store the chemicals safely. This section includes recommendations for handling, such as using appropriate protective equipment and instructions for storage, like keeping the product in a cool, dry, well-ventilated area. It may also include information on incompatible products and substances that should not be stored together with the chemical. Section eight of the SDS provides important information on how to protect yourself and minimize exposure while handling the chemical. It covers the permissible and recommended levels of exposure to the chemical from various agencies, as well as recommended for engineering controls, such as showers, eye wash stations, ventilation systems, or the enclosure of certain chemical processes. This section also includes recommendations for personal protection, such as eye and face protection, skin and body protection, respiratory protection, and appropriate hygiene measures. Section nine of the SDS provides information on the physical and chemical properties of the chemical. This includes important information such as appearance, odor, pH level, boiling point, melting point, and flash point, among many more. Understanding these properties is important for identifying potential hazards and taking appropriate precautions to avoid harm. Section 10 of the SDS provides information on the stability and reactivity of the chemical. This includes information on any conditions that may cause the chemical to become reactive or unstable, such as exposure to heat, pressure, or incompatible substances. This section may also provide information on any hazardous decomposition products that may be produced if the chemical is exposed to heat or other conditions. Section 11 of the safety data sheet provides important information on the potential health effects of exposure to the chemical, including data on its toxicity. This section includes numerical measures of toxicity, such as the LD50, which is the estimated dose of individual chemicals that will be lethal to 50% of test subjects, and the ATE mix, which estimates the lethal dose of a product composition as a whole. This section also includes information on the delayed and immediate effects of short and long-term exposure, and whether the chemical has been identified as a potential carcinogen by various organizations. Section 12 of the SDS provides information on the ecological impacts of the chemical if released into the environment. This includes how the chemical may affect the environment and any potential risk to local air, water, or soil. The section also lists the precautions that should be taken to prevent environmental damage or pollution, such as proper disposal methods and any regulations that apply. Section 13 of the SDS outlines how to safely dispose of the chemical or its container, as well as any precautions necessary to prevent personal or environmental harm. This includes recommended disposal methods like recycling or incineration, and any regulations that must be followed. Proper disposal is critical to protect the environment and prevent harm to yourself, others, and wildlife. 
Section 14 of the SCS provides information on how to transport the chemicals safely. It includes precautions for safe handling, loading, and unloading of the chemical during transportation. This section also contains any special requirements or restrictions for transportation such as packaging or labeling requirements. It's important to carefully follow the instructions listed in this section to ensure that the chemical is transported safely and legally. Section 15 of the SDS provides information on regulations and legal information related to the product. It covers details about any safety, health, and environmental regulations that apply to the product, as well as any specific requirements for its transportation, storage, or disposal. This includes compliance with various federal regulations such as the Clean Water Act, state-specific regulations like California's Proposition 65, and any relevant international regulations. Section 16 of the SDS covers other information that may not have been included in the previous sections. This may include information on the preparation of the SDS, such as the contact information for the manufacturer or supplier, and the last revision date, as well as any other relevant information that hasn't been covered. Now that we've gone over the 16 sections of an SDS and their requirements, let's talk about employer responsibilities. Employers play a critical role in ensuring the safety of their employees when handling hazardous chemicals. First, employers must provide their employees with ready access to the SDSs for each hazardous chemical in their workplace. This includes ensuring that SDSs are easily accessible during work shifts and in emergencies. While hard copies are often kept in highly visible yellow binders on workplace walls, many companies have moved to digital resources to ensure easy access to accurate and up-to-date SDSs. These resources may include online databases, which can be free or paid and SDS hotlines. Employers must designate one or more people to be responsible for obtaining and maintaining SDSs for their workplace. These designated individuals must ensure that SDSs are readily accessible to workers and are kept up to date as new information becomes available. They may also be responsible for training workers on how to locate and use SDSs. If an employer does not have the required SDS for hazardous workplace chemicals, they must immediately contact the manufacturer, supplier, or importer and request the necessary information. If the responsible party is unable or refuses to provide an SDS, the employer should promptly contact OSHA for assistance. By providing workers with easy access to SDSs, designated responsible individuals, and complying with regulations related to SDSs, employers can help protect their workers and create a safer workplace. As you now know, safety data sheets are an essential component of the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals. They provide users with critical information about the hazards of a chemical and how to handle and use each safely. We've covered the 16 sections of an SDS in detail, including hazard identification, first aid measures, firefighting measures, handling and storage, exposure controls, and regulatory information, among others. We've also discussed an employer's responsibilities in providing access to SDSs, designating responsible persons, and requesting SDSs from manufacturers or suppliers. By understanding and following the guidelines set out in SDSs, we can help prevent accidents and protect ourselves and others in the workplace. Remember to always consult the SDS before using or handling a hazardous chemical and follow all recommended safety measures.